This tutorial will show you four book binding techniques to make your own handmade books. Binding with rings, binding with brass screws, binding with cord, and a Japanese stitched binding. For this demonstration, I'll be showing you how to use A2 paper Fold it in half to make an A3 design book and I'll be showing you three different binding materials. So how to bind using cord, this is a waxed cotton cord, how to bind using binding rings and how to bind using binding screws. So the technique is the same up until the choice that we're going to use at the end. In order to punch the holes, I've got a choice of two different punching tools. This one here is a um, riveting punch, but it has a very good punch up at the top with an adjustable um, screw so that I can decide how deep the bite will be between the hole that's punched and the edge of the paper. Okay, so this is my favorite tool for binding with, but I also have a cheap um, single hole punch here and you will need a single hole punch for this method. Okay, to start with I need to make a template that I will use for punching holes in all of the sheets of paper. I won't be able to punch the holes in one go so I will need to punch in sections. I will punch maybe four sheets of paper at a time and then I can use the same template to punch the next four. So one of the most reliable ways to make a template is to take one of the sheets you're planning to work with and to tear it and the reason why I recommend working with the same paper is so that it has exactly the same width as the paper that you are planning to bind with. Even if you purchase A2 from different companies it will always have a slightly different measurement and that can be very annoying when you're trying to punch with it. The reason that we tear it is so that it's very clear that this is the binding edge. If I was to cut this very neatly with the ruler, I could very easily line the template up this way instead of this way. So this just makes really clear it's always this side. Now I have made two sections and I'm going to show you two ways of making a template. So with one of the pieces here, a very simple technique is to fold the page in half and make an obvious crease, a nice strong crease in the paper. I can then fold it in half again, make a nice strong crease, and then I can fold it in half again. Take care not to keep folding too many times because the paper will move and then the creases will all be slightly different measurements to each other. So once I've put two creases in, I prefer to fold to that crease and to that crease. Okay, so that'll be slightly more reliable. So in this case now, I have a binding template for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven binding rings or binding screws. I have five rings available. So this one could be of use, but I'm going to do one here for the five rings that I have available. Okay. So the measurement of the sheet of paper that I have is 42. I'll write that down, I'll use the pen. So I have 42 centimeters. And with the 42 centimeters, I'm going to mark the center, which is 21. Now, if I was to mark out five exactly, I would have one, two, three, four, five, roughly. And it would mean that the top ring is very far away from the top edge. And I think that that would mean that the corners will get damaged. So what I'm going to choose to do is marking from here out, I'm going to mark down from the top here three centimetres. That is a nicer measurement. And then halfway between zero and 18 is nine. So it brings me to here and I'll do the same on the other side. 
Now, for the binding later when I'm punching the holes, because the hole punch will cover the marks that I've made, I need to draw these marks further into the page and I will be able to use those as a guide. So with the marks that I've got using a set square here, I'm going to make those marks longer. Okay, so with the marks on the page, it's now very clear that this is the correct side of the template and this is the correct edge and I won't be able to use this side by mistake. So it makes it very clear as I punch my signatures of four pages, I can punch four, I can line this up with the next slot and punch the next four and it will always be in the same direction. Okay, so the first step then is to fold all of the pages in half. Now the reason that we're folding them in half, they will get bound on this edge here, which is the open edge. So this will be the outside edge of the pages as we turn them, is so that if we're drawing onto these sheets of paper, any bleed through from markers or whatever tools we're using, the bleed through then will go to the inside of the page. Now, so I have folded all of the pages. I have a black page, again, folded in half, like this for the cover. This will be the bound edge here, but there is a really nice generosity to having these folded edges. They turn really nicely in the hand, and the main reason, as I said before, for this notebook is when I'm drawing onto this side here and then rendering or colouring in whatever I'm drawing, the bleed through or the mess will go to the inside of the page here and it doesn't go through to the other side of the folded page. So that is the intention of having the folded sections. Now, for binding the book together, I have a cover on the front, I have a cover on the back, and I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven double pages. So that means I have 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 sheets of paper on the edge that I want to bind. So if I take about three, I think I could manage about four. For safety, I'll take about three each time. So I will move the book away. I'm going to take care to keep taking them in the same direction and moving them to the side when I'm done. So these open edges here, tap on the table. And then I normally lean them off the side of the table and put pegs on the edge. So before they get a chance to move and then I can line the template up on the edge of the book. So leaning it over the edge of the table and then I'm lining the hole punch up here with the edge of the book, lining the line in the centre of it up with the line here and punching a hole. Okay, so once I'm finished with one section, to systematically, not to flip them over by accident, to make a decision, I'm always going to turn them over once in this direction and the next bundle will get placed on top. I can take the next three. and then repeating the process with a hole punch again. So again, there it will be difficult to find the hole, so once I'm lining the hole punch up with the line, I will get it central enough. Okay, so following the same system as the last time and moving the sheets over. And then I have the last bundle, so. And then the final set of holes. Okay, and moving the last piece over to join the rest of the notebook. So a good tip for helping to align all of these holes is to either use a paintbrush or a, a chopstick here will do the same thing and that will have them all aligned for you.
Okay, so what I would recommend if you're starting a book and you're doing something like design work and you know that you will be adding more pages to the book, I would always recommend that you keep your template and that you can bind it in with the rest of your work. So I'm just going to open up the pegs here again and I'm going to add it in as the last page in the book. Okay, so of all of the binding materials that I've got, the easiest to work with are the binding rings. So the binding rings, you can lever the ring open slightly to the side like that, and then it swings open. So we simply insert that here through the hole and it just pushes shut like that. So one, So when I take away the pegs, I have a notebook with I five I do think rings. they look better if you put in more rings. I think the more rings you have, the better the book will read. Making the holes depending on the bite of the tool that you're using. So I've used a reasonably deep bite here, but that bite really should be no bigger than half of the width of the ring, otherwise the book won't open totally flat. So if the ring is about three centimeters wide, then the hole should go no further than 1.5 centimeters wide. Okay, and again, the most important part is that the pages are folded so that when you render onto them, all of the bleed through goes into the inside and doesn't show through to the other side of the page. Okay, so binding screws are another option. I have five binding screws here. They can be tightened with a screwdriver and they have one side with a slot and one flat side and they simply unscrew and the binding screw should fit through the holes that you've made. Okay, and then the screw will go through and close like that. Okay, so the screws have a very specific depth and will fit a very specific number of pages. So they can be a little bit more tricky to work with than the uh, rings. Okay, so that's all of the five um, brass screws in for the look of them with the slot side. So worth remembering if you're working with the notebook, you'll notice that the book doesn't open out flat because the screws are holding the binding um, closed. So really you're losing about this amount of every page that you're working with. So it is a limitation of working with these screws and it may be harder to work into when you can't open your notebook out flat. It would certainly be harder to draw into. So I think this as a presentation is maybe more suitable for end of year presentation rather than work as you're going along. Okay, so the next technique that I'm going to show you is working with a cord. So this is the waxed cotton cord. So I'm going to use it in a very similar way to the ring technique that I showed you earlier. So the cord will go through the hole and the way that the ring sat in the book, but half of the ring was loose on the outside. I'm going to do the same with the cord. So if I leave the cord about this length, a little bit longer than you think you need it, because when we tie a knot in it, what I'm going to do is to tie an overhand knot. Okay, so now a close up of the whole overhand knot. Taking the two cords together and wrapping them around one of your fingers, and then putting the two loose ends through the loop where your finger is. So through the loop here and then pulling them taut. And before you pull tight, just to double check that the distance is where we had described halfway between, that the edge of the book is halfway between the hole and the knot. Okay, so I've tied in the five pieces of cord. So if you leave these knots a little bit loose, um, you will be able to tighten them or loosen them and adjust as necessary. So I would say that is sitting absolutely perfectly as a binding as I go through the pages. I think it works pretty much equally as nicely as the rings. 
that I showed you earlier on and maybe more appropriate for a collection that doesn't feature metal or that maybe has a more natural element to it. So before I cut them, I'll just give them a little tighten. Then I think that they would be nice with a little bit of thread left. So it's really just to neaten them. Okay, and that is the finished book. Back together again. I have this gold cord and the cord needs to go through the holes three times per hole. So don't choose cord that's really thick and really thin is okay so long as it's strong. So as a guide, you will need three times the length of your book. So that's twice and three times. And just to be a little bit forgiving, I'm going to add a little bit extra. So I'll give it an extra half. Okay, the easiest tool to stitch with is a reasonably blunt needle. This one here has a blunt tip and it has a very large hole at the end. So when I thread my cord in, I'm just going to tie a little knot on it so it doesn't keep falling out. Okay, single knot should be okay. So what I need to do is to stitch into every hole twice and I'm going to start on the end and work my way down along. So on the first hole here, I'm stitching in from the top. So after that first stitch, I need to leave a little bit of thread so that I can tie it off at the end. So I'm going to use the peg to hold it tight so that it doesn't keep falling out on me. So I've gone in once from the top, so I'm going to go in a second time from the top and pull the cord tight, get a little bit of tension. Now, so I need to go into the second hole twice. So if I go in from the top again, this is not what we're looking for. So for the second hole, because the cord has come out in underneath here, I'm going to go along parallel to the edge of the book and I'm going to go up from the bottom of the book. So with this second hole, I'm stitching twice up from the bottom. So that is once. So make sure that there's a little bit of tension on that cord. And then the second time, I'm going to go back in from underneath again. So I've got nice and taut here, nice and taut here. The cord is carrying across from underneath. So this time I go back in from the top. So we're always following the straightest way across. So this time I will sew in twice from the top. So twice from the top, twice from underneath, twice from the top, twice from underneath, twice from the top. And then for the last hole, twice from the top. Okay, so as a pattern, what we notice is the first one has the thread underneath, the second one on top, the next one underneath, and then on top. So it's almost like a running stitch if we're not looking at these stitches here. So at the very end, what we're going to do is to wrap the thread up and over the top like this, which helps to hold the end nice and taut. And then we will do a running stitch in and out until we get to the end. So. I've come out here underneath, I'm going up and over the top and I'm going to go in and then from here I'm going to go up and down and up and down. So I'm just going to show you now how to finish up so I can take the pegs away. So if this is the front of the book, what I would recommend is turning the book upside down. I could tie a knot here, but then I have no way to tidy away the thread. So I'll turn the book over. And this hole here is a good place to finish up the work. So what I'm going to do is I'll just make this thread here a little bit shorter. I'm going to tie a reef knot. So if I tie right behind left, left behind right. So right behind left, and then left behind right. Okay, and then I think it looks quite nice if you leave a little knot 
I like the honesty of the little piece of thread um, being cut short there. I wouldn't cut it too short just in case it loosens. Okay, so again, with this type of a binding, the notebook doesn't open out fully flat. So what will make it easier to work with is to pre-fold all of the creases where it does open. That's not the end of the world. If you want to add extra pages, you can simply open the binding here, cut it open. It doesn't take so long to sew it up again. Okay, so that is the Japanese book binding stitch.